Hi, my name is Sean Pollan. I'm an assistant professor in psychology at Vanderbilt University. And today I'm going to give a video overview of an experiment I published with Vaidehi Natu, Jonathan Cohen, and Ken Norman in 2005. So um, I've always been fascinated with this concept of a neural representational space. And so this is the idea that as we go about our days, as we go about move about the world, distributed patterns of neural activity uh, across our brain reflect the details of our experience. In a sense, we, uh, as we're in any situation, we're creating an internal model of our world inside our brain in these distributed patterns of neural activity. And one thing that I spent a lot of time thinking about as a graduate student when I ran this study was this idea of mental time travel. So this is the idea that when we think back to memories of past experiences, in a sense it's like we're revisiting that past event. So Endel Tolving uh, referred to the process of contextual reinstatement to elaborate on this idea. So this is the idea that you're actually, when you think back to a past experience, you're reactivating the neural representations that were active when you had that experience. And so in terms of neural representational space, we should see neural activity that corresponds to an experience being reactivated when someone thinks back to that experience. And so in this study, we use the free recall task to bring mental time travel into the laboratory. Okay, so in the free recall task, the, we put the participant in the scanner and they can see a little screen and we present lists of items where the items are drawn from three categories uh, celebrities, landmarks, and objects. So the person might study uh, the celebrity Jack Nicholson, they might study the object at Birdhouse, they might study the landmark uh, Eiffel Tower, and then at the end of the list uh, the screen goes blank and the participant is asked to remember as many items as they can from the list in whatever order they come to mind. So our goal in this study was to use categories that elicit distinct patterns of neural activity, have a person study items from these categories, and then track these neural patterns while the person is searching through their memory. We used a uh, logistic regression-based classifier in order to characterize these patterns during the study period. So while the person was having their brain activity recorded, we presented, the, they studied these stimuli. So while the person was studying Jack Nicholson, there would be a characteristic celebrity-like pattern of neural activity. And we would take all of the data, all of the voxels that, um, throughout the person's brain and feed them into this classification algorithm and tell the classifier that this is an example of the celebrity category as indicated by the leftmost output unit being activated. Similarly, when they studied um, a landmark, the brain would take on a characteristic landmark pattern and we would tell the classifier this is an example of the landmark category and similarly for the object category distinct pattern of object related activity which is uh, learned by the classification algorithm so at the end of the study period the classifier uh, had a number of examples of what neural activity from the three categories looked like and it could use that to uh, predict for any new pattern of brain activity whether that pattern corresponded to something from the celebrity category, landmark category, or object category. So um, at this point our strategy was to train this classifier on patterns of bold activity observed while the participants studied items from the three categories. And then during the later recall period, we would feed patterns of bold activity to the classifier one at a time and get estimates from the classifier of how much this pattern of neural activity during recall matched each of the three study contexts. So the, the 
the celebrity, the landmark, or the object uh, context. So these recall periods um, were free, it's a free recall, so participants ramble on and make a number of responses, uh, work their way through the categories, and we processed these uh, sequences and as expected from decades of uh, empirical work we saw a substantial amount of category clustering which is where participants tend to report items from the same category in you know successive uh, responses during the recall period even though these items were never presented in adjacent positions in the lists so um, we took the neural, the estimates from the classifier and made a graph. So here we're looking at a single subject during a final recall period that lasted for four minutes and the participant's job was just to sit there and say as many of the celebrities, landmarks, and objects that he could remember in whatever order they came to mind. And so here on the x-axis there's one uh, point for each uh, full brain image acquired by the scanner and then the classifier for each one of those images gives us three estimates. How much does this image match the study context for celebrity? How much does it match the study context for location? How much does it match the study context for object? So if we look at the, on the x-axis, uh, time point 50, the classifier is saying this brain state during the recall period looks an awful lot like um, the, the brain looked while the person was studying landmarks, less so like objects and even less so like when they were studying celebrities. So now we can superimpose on the top of the graph a record of the vocal responses uh, lay, colored by which category they came from. And we can see that there's a remarkable correspondence between these um, neural patterns, these category, the coming and going of these category specific neural patterns and the actual recall responses made by the participants. And we can see whenever you see multiple dots of the same color in a row, that's the person um, performing, um, doing category clustering. They're, they're remembering a number of items from the same category in a burst. And it looked to us like the uh, category estimates were ramping up as the even prior to the person discovering that first uh, item in their memory and to to characterize this we uh, carried out an event locked averaging analysis in which we looked at all of the first responses from a given First, a given set of same category responses and we combined responses from all three categories uh, and, and that this is what we see in this uh, graph here so on the x-axis we have time now this isn't time over the course of the whole recall period now it's locked to each individual recall event so time point zero corresponds for example to the instant that the person uh, reported Jack Nicholson and if um, the event in question was indeed them reporting a celebrity, then the celebrity estimate would go into a bin where we were averaging all the, the bin corresponding to the black line. So that's the currently recalled category, the category that's actually being said at time zero. The red line was whatever category they had just been reporting items from. So any category that had a, an item reported in the last 10 seconds or so. And the baseline, the purple line, was any category that did not have um, any recalls from it in the past 10 seconds or so. And we can see on the bottom a difference score between the black line, the, the rising estimate for the category they're about to recall, and the baseline, the, this purple line of any category that hasn't been set recently. And as early as three scans prior to the vocalization, we see that there's already a reliable difference between the, um, up, the upcoming category estimate and the baseline estimate. So in this study, we observed category-specific patterns of neural activity that predict the category of an upcoming recall. And we'd like to interpret this as mental time travel in action. Um, there's still a lot of work to do in this domain to link uh, neural representations 
with cognitive mechanisms. And in current work, we're using computational models of memory search to form more pre precise hypotheses regarding what the mechanistic role of these activity patterns are. And I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. And uh, thanks for your interest in my work. And I'll be seeing you.